<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get the hang of it, but I said, you know, let me just, um, let me give it another go. Hold on, where will I put this now so it won't be a problem? Hold on. Is that okay? Is that okay? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you clearly. Yeah? Okay, I don't know if I can hold this for long, so I'm just going to try and position it somewhere, yeah? Uh, okay, maybe you just hang it somewhere. Yeah, and, um... can you see me now? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Oh, brilliant. All right, all right. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, um, live here I have um, the one and only Ade Banji Alade, addictive, <laughs> addictive sketcher. Yeah, okay. the addictive sketcher. Shut <laughs> 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 amazing, amazing. Glad to have you here, boss. Glad to have you here. And can you hear me though? Yeah, sure, sure. Brilliant. We can hear you and all all the guests can hear you. Good. Um all right. Now uh we'll just go straight to business. Um this is a class. So this is not an interview. Uh we want to know what you know. We want to know why you do what you do. Okay. Uh, I must I must confess to you, somebody sent me a message after one of my editions. Say, please bring addictive sketcher. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll give that a shot. Um, I can't travel to the UK now because the airstrips are closed. But let me try and see if you can get him online. And uh, here you are. So thank you for, for, for coming through. Yeah, you're now, most um, yeah, yeah. Now, let's take it from here. How did you get into art? How did this journey start? Well, the way I got into art, um, when I was about six or seven years old, um, one of my cousins in London, because I was born in London before we went back to Nigeria, one of my cousins, um, he, oh, he introduced me to football. Um, he got me um, acquainted with uh, Arsenal. Um, and that was, we're talking about 1977, 78. Wow. And once I got hooked into football, I started loving to draw football players. You know, I, I love to draw football players. So I, I bought this, this, there was this comic that used to be sold in those days. It's called Roy of the Rovers. And I would okay. basically draw all those football players in this comic. I actually did this, you know, um, so seriously. So the, the, the love of drawing football players and, and the love of football and the ability to draw got me into drawing, I would say. But what happened was at the age of eight, we went to Nigeria and I went to school in Maryland, Maryland Primary School, not the convent oh. in Lagos. Mm. It's the Maryland Primary School, which was then the Jack on this school. They didn't oh. do art at all. So I lost mm. for the, for the, for, from, from my fourth year in primary school, fourth, fifth and sixth year in primary school, there was nothing to really spur that talent I had. Um, but when I got to secondary school, I went to a very good secondary school in those days. The federal government mm. college, the federal government college, um, where they were very good in those days, and I went to federal government college in Ugo, and oh. I had two great art teachers, and these guys, mm. they just nurtured all my all everything that was a talent in me, and I know that mm. the one thing I remember they told me was, if you keep drawing like this, you will survive the first year in university, and you can imagine I was in secondary school then. And if mm. they're telling you in secondary school that you can survive the first year in a university if you keep drawing like this, then you know how it makes you feel. You feel elated. And the other thing was because I belonged to um, um, a good, it was a good school. So it wasn't only me who could draw. We had a, what we call a very healthy competition. You know, people mm. were drawing crazy stuff then, shading mm. so we bounced yeah, off each yeah. other. But finally, what would make me choose art as a career? Because with all that, going to federal government college, I didn't really want to do art. I wanted to mm. be an architect, you see. And oh. I, I, I put in for jam. I wanted to do the ar architecture. 
But at the time when I was going to do the jam, or after I actually done the jam, but what happened was um, um, a lot of tragedies. Three tragedies happened in my life. In 1988, wow. I lost my elder brother. In 1990, uh, sorry, 1989, I lost my dad. And in, and in 1990, um, I lost my mum. And so wow. that was a massive like blow for everything in my life. I thought my life would come to a standstill. But mm. what happened at the age of 18 in 1990 was that I had an auntie. She was a Christian. And she decided to adopt me so, so that um, I wouldn't have to go through any more sorrows. And oh. she brought me to church. She said I should get saved. And she said, God will plan mm. my life. I shouldn't worry about that. It wasn't mm. easy. I'm trying to just summarize everything. Yeah. But one yeah, thing imagine. she told me, she said, you know what? You need to pray to God to tell you what to do don't just choose anything because you're good at it and after i mm. got saved i must have prayed and prayed and prayed i never forget one afternoon it was in a youth service in my church because i go to the mm. apostolic faith church in um, lagos I, I, I it's like a most audible voice god told me mm. i've given you a talent and i want mm. you to go and showcase this gift to the world and i believe mm. that was it once i heard that i left the architecture stayed one more year did um, the, the, the poly jam and I got into Yabatek. So that's yeah. kind of where my journey started as um, um, from the drawing of football players through to secondary school, through to when I decided to take it full time to go into the art, uh, an art course at Yaba College of Technology in Nigeria. All right, F fantastic. So you will just go on from there. Yabatek. Uh, perhaps was um, um, the, the, the starting point of your professional career. So um, I'm sure you were under the tutelage of uh, Kolade Oshinawa. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, um, Doctor, uh, um, what's his name now? Mm. So in, in my time, yeah. we had Kolade yeah. Oshinawa. Yeah. We had Rukeme Noserime. Yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike, um, oh, Mike, yeah, Mike, yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike, yeah. Dr. Mike, yeah. We even had Edosa Ogugo, and we oh. had, um, we had Abiodun. Uh -huh. Those were they, they were visiting lecturers. Oh, um, yeah, and then we also had someone called Benga Orimoloye. These guys, oh, I know, yeah, yeah, these guys were the guys that mm. formed, um. I think the bedrock of everything that I did because, man, mm. you know, they, they were hot. They had art careers that were, were thriving. Mm. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So those were, those were the people that were, I mean, Kolade, um, um, uh, Kolade he, he, yeah. he supervised my final year project. So wow. he, he used to take us in pictorial composition. And mm. we had mm -hmm. uh, another person we had then was Lara Ige. I don't know when wow, I would Jack. Pardon? Yeah. Laraige Jack. Yes, 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 yes. So those wow. were my teachers then. Yeah. Mm. I, I think you, you were you were in good hands. Oh yeah. You were oh, still, yeah. you yeah. I, 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 I'm, now, I, I'm trying to trace this addiction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm trying so there's no way you could have been under the tutelage of these great guys and you should be doing less. Now, um, you, you do outdoor, plain hair. Yeah. Why, why is that? Right. When I was in Yaba Tech, right, um, when I started, because you do, you first of all do a, 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 what we call OND. So I, yeah. I think it's all changed now. I think they're doing degrees now. No, no, it's there. Ordinary National Diploma, yeah, then you progress to National higher National Diploma. So yeah. when you got in there, you did things like general drawing, um, yeah. outdoor outdoor drawing so when it came to outdoor drawing and outdoor painting man they'll tell us to go to um onyiko market yaba mm. anywhere mm. around the school they just go draw and sometimes mm. go paint um go mm. paint the rectors you know they were just giving us places and i noticed that once once me and my friends, we go with our um, easels and we had a big hat, the Fulani hat to cover us from the sun. Yeah. I found out that I was in my element. I could, oh. sit, there. I could sit there for, for a whole mm. 
I could stay a whole a whole day and just draw because I loved the fact that I could come in contact with nature, with a place, with a market, lively place, as busy as it was. And they didn't they didn't give us too much problem. They didn't holler us because we were students. Once they know you're a student, so like they were just saying uh, say my language. <laughs> so I just do that, you know what I'm saying? I just sit there. So that's the first place. And then when I got to H and D, boy, then it got really intense because I, I majored in painting. So we did things like again, outdoor painting, outdoor drawing. Mm. And there was a guy who took us. I never forget. His name is um ooh, he's a sculptor. Ah, it's just got it's just skip me here. We used to call him mm. Robocop then, but um <laughs> Oluamoda. Ah, Baba, yeah. Olu. Yeah, so Olu Amoda, he he took mm. us um um gen, a general drawing and he mm. would say, Don't just go and draw the tree and, and mm. just do it anyhow. He made us draw, actually really draw. So he brought in a book by a guy called Ted Kosky, who used to mm. use a broad broad stroke technique with pencils, and he said, I don't just want you to give me strokes get there and draw for me and if you did anything that wasn't like that he wouldn't take it and you're gonna fail and no one was ready to fail so that's where my love and when it comes to outdoor painting i never got less than an a1 so that had been in 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 me for a long time but when i came to this country there was hardly anywhere i could break through that's a very long story i just want to go straight to the plein air stuff um, yeah I did a I did a I did a portrait course in at Heatherly School of Fine Art. It's a I did a diploma in portraiture at the Heatherly School of Fine Art in Chelsea. Okay. And after that, they encourage us to work from life. So you either work from um, a, a person, paint them from life, just make sure you don't stop working from life. But the mm. thing, when I finished from Heatherly's, I couldn't afford a model. But I noticed that, that you don't need to pay to paint places. You don't need to pay to plant trees. So in mm. order not to lose my touch after the course, I kept on painting plein air. Just go out there, um, give me from 90 minutes to three hours. I'll take a scene on. It could be small. It could be something as small as this. This is like yeah. a, a six by eight. Or it could yeah. be even yeah. maybe a sixteen, a sixteen by a sixteen by twelve, or even bigger. Ooh. But one thing mm. I learned is that to, all this is from Yabatek. It's like getting somewhere. They give you this stuff to do. You mm. go straight into it and you nail it. And and that was where the love came from. Wow! Great! 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 <laughs> wow! So um um. The uh, artist pledge support. Yes. Yeah. So uh, speak to that. What is that about? Oh, okay. Now, when we all got into lockdown, right? When we all got into lockdown and, um, um, do you know what I mean? We all got into this position where we'd never been in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Around March, April, you know, galleries were closing no, nobody could do anything, do you know what I mean? And artists would suffer because if the galleries weren't open, then everything all of a sudden shifted online. And we needed to support each other. So this 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 guy just came up with this idea. I think his name is Matthew Burrows. Or I can't yeah, remember. Michael Burrows, exactly. yeah. yeah. So yeah. he came up with this idea. He wanted to support his friends. So he said, we're just going to put a little price, a very low price. I mean, this price, even, and I, I would say, there is no gallery in the UK that is standard that would sell any work for £200. It don't matter what the work is. At least the smallest drawing or sketch should start from £350. But yeah. he knew people were in a tight position. So he put a baseline, yeah. whether it's a print, any kind of work. He said, we will do work and put it for a base price of £200. And once you sell five works, you must pledge that you would buy another artist's work who is taking part in that 
for 200. So basically, for every 1,000 pounds sales, you give 200 pounds to another artist who is taking part. Whoa. And for long, for so long, I've always wanted to have a collection of my own to buy artists yeah. work. But because I'm mm. so busy, wrapped up with my own life, blah, 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 never mm -hmm. had the chance. Mm -hmm. Once this guy set this ball rolling, ooh, I'm like, this has to be my opportunity. I'm going to collect from artists that I love. But I was so late in starting. This is the thing. Because I didn't buy the idea. I'm like, how can I sell my work for 200? Blah, blah, blah. And my head was all over the place. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, I was listening to one of my mentors. And her name, if I can remember, is Sandy Karawoski. She's a motivational, mm -hmm. inspirational business owner and all that because i learned from yeah. some i don't only focus on the art i want to know what the people who are driving sales on online how do they mm. do it what did they do mm. and i remember mm. i was sitting listening to her and she said she didn't know she was talking to me she was just talking in general like she normally has these talks and she said who are you and what are you offering now that you are so big and big-headed that you can't reduce it by 75%. She said, mm -hmm. I've offered my courses. My courses go for 99 pounds a month. I'm now gonna be offering them for like, um, I think she was offering them for about $20, $20. And she normally did it for $99. And she said, mm -hmm. she's doing this because people are losing jobs. The economy is crashing. You've yeah. got to find a way to help reduce mm. what you're doing get to a generality of people and i thought this woman's talking to me now i'm making my decision i'm going to do this i'm going to do it because one is supporting other artists because once you make five sales you're going to make enough you're going to make sure you pledge to buy another person's one so yeah. that was it and also it would keep me busy during the lockdown because the danger in the lockdown is if you didn't have a goal if you didn't have a purpose, if you didn't have something that would keep you, there's, there was two, imagine April, imagine March, April, June, yeah, when this thing, yeah, oh, yeah. March, April, May, when um, mm. CNN, Sky, BBC, they're just running crazy news. Actually, I mm. told people then, I said, I had to stop listening to the news. Because if mm. you dared listen to the news then, you will just lose your vibe. Sense. There's yeah. no way unless you were yeah. doing commissions or something, you would think, where is all this going to lead to? And so doing that also kept me, it gave me some sort of purpose because I don't only do um, painting. I work for the BBC. I was doing, um, uh, I do um, um, uh, art documentaries for the BBC on the one show. All that got cancelled oh, because it brings you in contact with people. I do mm. workshops in different places, in schools. All that got cancelled because of mm. corona i do yeah. i do motivational speeches to schools i help um um young children um in secondary schools to use the right brain the the the, the, the creative side of their brain in revision mm. all that got cancelled and even mm. my own being able to go out and do plein air boy no one was going out. You didn't want to die. So, <laughs> so the artist support place then, it was just mm. another outlet because the post offices were still open because they are actually, what will I call them? They were still key services. Essential services. Yeah. So I, yeah. all I needed to do was to paint. People would buy it and I would put in the post and people would get it and they were glad. So that's all about the artist support pledge. I'm still doing it. Some people ask me, why are you still doing it when things have eased off? Well, I tell people that I had a solo exhibition cancelled this year. I prepared wow. for that. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, they, some galleries have continued. But where I was going to have my solo, they, they, they cancelled completely. So I said, you know what? A lot of us, what we invested in didn't work out. But if someone else came up with an idea that we could latch on, that wouldn't yeah. affect our prices because I have the, the, the works that are going for this price, they're limited sizes. So they won't affect the big works or the main works. Yeah, so I keep it going. I keep it going until everything <laughs> turn, becomes normal. And who knows when that is going to be? We just pray that there's not going to be a second 
wave or wave. a second lockdown. Yeah. Once we can survive this year, we're fine. Great, great. All right. Uh, the, the, the last time I checked, you you got um, I saw your fourteenth acquisition of the artist play. Yeah. So, so that tells me you must have sold um, about seventy pieces. Yeah, I've sold over a hundred now. I'm going to send you an account details after this show. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, uh, somebody is asking a question before we go on. Yeah. She said, uh, what has been the biggest challenge in your art journey? Oh. What do you consider the biggest challenge so far? Okay, the biggest challenge in my art journey, it has been... When, because I didn't go into art full time straight on, okay? What I used okay. to do was um, I used to, because um, when I came to this country in 1999, because uh, what happened, I, I, I'll root it this way. In 1999, I came back to this country at the age of 27. After leaving mm. at the age of eight, I spent mm. about 19 years or so in Nigeria. Yeah, so from the age of eight to the age of 27, Nigeria. When I came back to the UK, I came back with my HND. I came back with all my, 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 I came back with a big spirit. But when I came to the UK, boy, it knocked me hmm. off balance. There was no body who wanted to see my paintings. I had African paintings. No one wanted to see them. There were no hmm. galleries accepting what I was doing. It was hmm. just, I was depressed. In fact, I would tell hmm. you, I wanted to go back. But one of the ladies wow. I was living with, because she housed me, I didn't even have anywhere to stay. Mm. She said, Adebanji, if you go back and you, if you run away from this battle, you will run away from more battles in your life. I need you to stick in here, find a way to make this whole thing work, and mm. let's see where it will go. So I remember her bringing a paper home, and she said she saw an advert where I could volunteer to teach homeless people art. It's free, it ain't gonna pay you. They pay for your travel to get there, but it's better than sitting at home and moaning and complaining that it's not working out in the UK. So I started from there in 1999. I used to go once a week to teach homeless people how to draw. Now these homeless people, they're in a hostel, but guys, they're smoking, they're on drugs, these guys mm. not well kept. And imagine me coming. I'm not used to all this. But they trained us on how to relate with them to make it mm. work. Actually, the role mm. was called a make it work volunteer worker because you had to make it work. I did that. <laughs> and then I saw a part-time job in that, in that um, uh, organization. It's called St. Mongo's. It's one of the biggest homeless um, organizations in London. And oh. I got the job. I used to, and then I started working um, part time. All this time, I was still doing my art, but oh, I wasn't doing it full time. But I never stopped sketching. I never stopped doing my art. Then, in I think it was two thousand and two, a full time position came up, and they wanted me to actually be an activity development worker to really help them and work with them. So I did this full-time job till 2008. But my oh. art career started picking up like crazy. I mean, mm. I'll go to work. I'll, even when I'm at work, I'll be checking the internet for things and going on. So what happened was there started to be a clash. And I'm not one person. I don't know how to juggle two different um, things at the same time. It was I can do it now, but then it was hard. So I just put in my resignation letter and I jumped into the art business, which I will tell no one to do. <laughs> I jumped in full time in 2008. And mm. that's been my biggest challenge because there was no other way I could feed my family unless I got something to work from my art. And my family mm. suffered for the first three years from 2008 to 2011. I did not make a profit. My mm. wife was catering for me, but she mm. believed in me. And as an artist, I tell you what, you need someone to believe in you. And she mm. stood by Listen. me. <laughs> I won't, I won't, Listen, I won't, say that I won't, again. Yeah? 
Say that again, as an artist. Yeah, as an artist, you need someone to believe in you because it mm. all sounds kind of crazy when you're doing your stuff. And I remember mm. this, this is something I, I, I think I've only told my church people, but I'll say it out loud. She used to give me what I call, um, it, it was like an allowance every month. Oh. <laughs> That's apart from every other thing, just to keep my head above water. Mm -hmm. But in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it started happening. 2010, mm -hmm. I met a guy called Carl Terry. God bless him, wherever he is now. I was oh. in Bath painting plein air and mm. act because I won an award. And then he asked me, he says, um, Adibanji, do you need a gallery? I'm like, huh? Me? I, <laughs> you're talking about, I need a gallery. He says, do you want one now? I'm like, mm. oh, what are, you, are you joking? He says, give me a minute, I'll make a call. And he called this woman called, called Enid Lawson. She's retired mm. from the gallery business. Now he just called her one shot. He says, I have mm. a guy here who I know is really good. He says, you might like what he does. He paints London scenes. He says, we're in Bath mm. at the moment, but I bet you when he goes back to London, you love what he does. The woman said, send me 10 images, JPEGs on email. I sent her the images. She's like, I can't promise you I will pay your mortgage, but I love what you're doing and I'll make mm. it happen. And I'll never mm. forget, I had an exhibition with three other painters and I had it in 2011. I must have made 14,000 pounds a month. I've never seen that kind of money in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Imagine going from mm. struggling, mm. From struggling, nothing. Yeah. struggling, like yeah. really struggling to be able mm. to actually start making some sort of progress. And it all came, and this is the one thing I would say is because Carl Terry, this guy, he's an artist too, be mm. it, it, it's, so, it's so important because there was no way I would have walked into Enid Lawson. <laughs> yeah. Without, Too many things yeah. were against me. I'm a black guy. Mm. Look, you're a black guy in the UK. Mm. You're walking in. You're, it, it ain't going to work. Sorry, mate. But for someone mm. to give you a word of mouth recommendation, it was saving. Mm. So what mm. I would love to encourage is drop this one in. Never joke with your network. Someone in your network might be the person who would lead you to do mm. something who might, do you know what I mean? There would always mm. be this connection. Now, the funny mm. thing, I didn't know Carl Terry was going to help me out. He wanted me to help him. He said, I like the way you paint, Adibanji. Let's paint together. I just thank God I didn't chase him away. I'm like, you, you're just a pest. You, you, you get away. Let, I, I like to paint alone, but something just told me, like, just allow this mm. guy to paint together. And while mm. we were painting, he saw the way I paint, and he says, "Look, I love to paint. I can paint, but the way you are painting, boy, you need you need exposure." <laughs> <laughs> and so that Great. is how I was able to survive one of the um, the greatest uh, challenges in my career. Wow, wow, that's 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 touching. Um, <laughs> there is the Cafe Art League. I said we are 88 artists located in Washington D.C., and um, many of us are playing here. Artist, this is great to hear. All right, thank you guys. Thank you for joining. Oh, brilliant, me. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, th th there was a post you you did recently. Yeah. Um, you tagged it. Just get hungry again. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now for you now, I I'm beginning to wonder. I'm an artist as well. Yeah. I, I have I have this pack, but uh, when I see your zeal, your zest. Is, is is second to none. What, what wakes you up in the morning? What, what, what okay. drives you? Okay, yeah. you you know you know you know everyone has history. Okay, yeah. You see the things that happen in my life. Mm. My elder brother died at the age of twenty six. Wow. Yeah. I was only sixteen when he died. Mm. <laughs> my dad died at the age of fifty three. Mm. Now I'm only. I'm only five years from being the same age. I'm 48 mm. now. He died at the yeah. age of 53. My mom died mm. at the age of 51. I'm only wow. three years from that age. 
so mm -hmm. I know we are all living on borrowed time. And mm -hmm. we never know how long we've got on planet mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. And because I believe in the Bible, which says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it mm -hmm. with all thy might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I have to wake up in the morning and kill something. Um, what I'm trying to say is if you get up in the morning it don't matter what you do I don't mind that you might be an accountant a sculptor a teacher yeah. make sure you go to that place where you earn your living and kill it give it your True. best shot why? Oh. because that's the only time you will find your purpose in whatever oh. you do if you don't do what you do with a, all your heart then why are you doing it? Why not just go do something where your heart is? But if your heart is in something, then give it everything you've got. Then I, I tell people this. I says sometimes I go to a shop. I want to buy a pair of shoes. And then all of a sudden, there's this um, retail assistant in the shop. She's greeting me. She's bringing the shoes. She's telling me, try this. I like how that looks on you. Oh, that fits you. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I like that. And I never would want to buy that. But I've already mm. bought the shoes because this attendant in this shop, she is giving me everything she's got. That's mm. energy. <laughs> you with me? <laughs> so even though I, sometimes you don't have the money, but I'm like, I can't leave this shop after this lady has dimmed everything. You just feel you want to buy it. Now, that's the difference between someone who works for the money, but between someone who's working for the money and someone who sees beyond the money. Are you with me? You've got to yeah. see beyond that. So when I go out to paint, when I wake up in the morning, knowing fully we have limited time to spend, I want to make sure I give it everything. The mm. energy is what people buy. A lot of people buy my works. They're not really buying those works. They want a little bit of this vibe that comes along with it because they love, it's mm. all of us love it. Who doesn't love mm. someone who enjoys their job? If you mm. meet a teacher, if you meet yeah. a lawyer and you see they're mm. passionate about what they do, something within you says, this is what human beings should be like. It's called being an effective human being. Once you're effective, it doesn't matter where you are or what you are, doors will open. People mm -hmm. love people who make them feel good. I ain't going to love people who complain, um, uh, who, who, who have a negative orientation in life. No. I want to be where I'm, I want to be next to somebody who makes me feel alive. So, but before I expect that from someone, why don't I be that person? Why don't I come across with life? Then the more I give life, the more I spread life, the more it comes back because that's a law of give and take. The more you give, the more you get. So send something out into universe. Send a good vibe. And the good vibe is definitely going to come back to you. It is inevitable. It must come back. Try it. I can guarantee you. You do something wholeheartedly. Go online. Talk about the painting you've done passionately. Make sure you know what you're saying and talk about it with all your heart and be willing to help someone because you know what? We all know a little bit more than someone else. We can, we, what I know, somebody else knows more and someone else knows less. I should always be able to help someone know better. So if you go on sketchinspiration.com, you will see all my tips. I share them. Mm. I call them hot shots. There's demonstrations. There's all sorts there. You can see, um, you can see what I do and you can learn. It's the reason why I, I, um, I wrote a book. Where, where is that um, addictive sketcher? Uh, should get the book. You know? Yeah. Uh, I published this. Um, um, oh, sorry, really? Search Press published this addictive sketcher. Um, uh, it's part of it. And then later on this year, um, oh, okay, next month, this one is coming out. This is a new one. This one is called. This one is called addictive. 
it's people are going to be able to own a whole sketchbook every mm. page so they can see the passion in real life so it has mm. not much text but everything is just all my sketches how i sketch on a daily basis i want to share this passion with the world because there's mm. people in the world who've shared their passion with me and it's made mm. me a better person so why not mm. let's make this world a better place so thinking in this way makes me wake up in the morning and say let's kill it so always think about it what am i killing today you know if I, 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 when I went to Nigeria, you know, a lot of things I learned from Nigeria. You look at those market women. If they don't go to the market, shout on top of their voices. I say mm. in my language, eh, well, I'll raise you. <laughs> I'm shouting, I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. They're going to start. Mm. Children, mm. Some of those women will feed children, support children to university level but they put in the work. Now, we've got mo a lot more opportunity than street hawkers or marketers. So whatever we do, we're marketers. We're marketers anyway. We market our brand. And that's why I started with sketching, because sketching is the most basic thing. So I said to myself, whatever genre you are in art, you've got a sketch. If you're a designer, you sketch. If you're a sculptor, you sketch. If you're a ceramist, you sketch. Sketching is what got me into everything that I do. It's the most basic thing. So I'm like, I need to kill sketching, put my life into it, and then every other thing that's going to happen, let it happen. But let's do it. I'm, 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 I'm fired up. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh finally somebody asked that uh, what's your advice for nigerians who are uh crossing over to the uk artists what's your advice for survivor at this point you have been there you have walked through this path okay. what do you advise them to do okay yeah. my question is why do you want to come over to the uk <laughs> no. No. because the world okay. is global now Every yeah. opportunity is open everywhere. You see, the time I came over to the UK, we didn't have this boom of the internet that we have now. I came yeah. in 1999. Maybe the internet was just sniffing up. We didn't yeah. have it. Like now, I'm just thinking, I want to know why. Why do you want to come? Because if you can't achieve it in Nigeria, I don't know if you're going to achieve it over here. It's going to take you grits, guts, and everything it's got. You know why? Because rejection is not easy to deal with. And you're going to deal with that because nobody knows you. You're coming for the first time. You're going to break into, you're trying to break into a market where your name is hard to pronounce, your color is against you. you, you, you but, but one thing I can guarantee, the advice I will give you is that if you're ready to be humble and work hard at that thing which you think you know, because this is what happened to me. I thought I was good in drawing. I was oh. one of the best drawers in Yabatek. Listen, when I was in Yabatek, I did, 97, I won best student, art design and printing. Best student, the school of art design and printing. And the best wow. result in the whole school. In the whole wow. Yabatek College of Technology, I got a GPA of 4.47. Look, Amazing. I thought I was the best. And then I mm. came to London, I came to Heatherley's. And I went for an interview to join Heavenly School of Fine Art. And I remember Susan, she looked at my drawing, says, I demand you, you can't draw. <laughs> <laughs> then I adjusted my seat. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you? She said, you can shade. <laughs> I never forget that. She said, you can shade, but you're not drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I almost <laughs> packed my stuff to leave. Something <laughs> kept me in that seat, says, look, mm. these are experienced people. She went to the Slade, not the Slade mm. how it is now. This is yeah, the Slade when is. they still did representational drawing. It was the mm. influence from the Slade that people like Ben and Wongu had when yeah. they did yeah. all what they did. Ben and Wongu sculpted mm. the Queen. These guys were trained professionally, representationally by the British. When he came to Nigeria, he did a few stints with some of abstract sculpture, but that basic training was there. So I had to respect what she was saying. John Walton, who was the principal of Headley School of Fine Art, he went, he went to 
um, he, he was in the same class with Ben and Wong. So he told me, you know, you should know somebody called Ben and Wong. Like, okay, I, I say in the most uh, posh way, says, Adibanji, you know, I, I know someone called Ben, Ben and Wong. Do you know him? I said, I never saw the man, but I know he was one of the great guys. He said, I was in the same class as him at the slate. I'm like, okay, okay. These people must know what they're saying now. So yeah. I humbled myself, started learning. What is it I'm not doing? And some of the things the teachers told me is that you're not really paying attention. You're using, ha, ah, no, you're using too many lines. You're using too many lines. You're just, you're just stroking like mad says calm down boy calm down because yeah. when we were in nigeria the strokes make you feel yeah. like you're the best but here yeah. <laughs> they let all the dust <laughs> settle and they just really <laughs> want you to draw and they said can you nail this with the fewest minds uh, sorry with the fewest lines yeah. Huh? Yeah. i now say yay yay <laughs> this one oh, wow and then every friday yeah. at heavenly's we had live drawing i yeah. tried my best I listened and I reignited my passion for sketching at Heatherly's. When I lost, when I left Heatherly's, I sketched every single day on the train, on the tube home. That's how I became the addictive sketcher. And boy, that has helped me millions because once you work on your drawing, this might not pertain to pertain much to the abstract painters, but if you are a, a, a representative rep representational painter, your drawing must be on, 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 on spot. And it's by practice that it gets better. You need to be able to coordinate your eye and hand. And that's the kind of work I do. And yeah, that's all I, that's, that's, so I could say, um, that's the advice I'll give them, but be ready to be humble, get in and don't let any, 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 what will I call it? Any obstacles, they're just to prepare you for the best. So if yeah. things don't work out in the first, second, third year, don't run back home, because that's what I wanted to do. And I told you that lady says, if you run away yeah. from this battle, this battle you're going to yeah. keep running away from battle. So I had to stick yeah. in there, work with yeah. the homeless, still do my art until the art picked up and I put in my resignation letter and I said, I'm going to survive. But it weren't even easy at then. And like I told you, I did three years. I'd just been married in 2005. 2008, I went full time. I never made a profit till 2011. It was crazy. So, man. <laughs> but wow. not everybody's wow. journey is going to be like this. But I can only tell you and I can only say yeah. what I know and what I've experienced. And, mm. and I believe if you stick to what you know and you believe, this is the one thing that I can say. You must believe in yourself if no one else believes in you. You've got wow. to believe in what you've got, what God has invested into you. You've got to believe in it. It might not be in, in its full um, fruition. It might not be at the best level yet, but be willing to learn. Be willing to get mentors, people who you can learn under and invest in your craft. I still buy art videos. I'm going to open my bag in my rucksack. I have a whole... This is a whole, um, this is a whole, look, this is, I'm, I'm bringing this out now. This is a whole, uh, uh, it's a CD. And these are all Richard Schmidt, Scott Burdick, wow. um, mm. Peter Weilerman, Dan Gerard, mm. um, a group of seven, Peter Brown, Morgan Weislin. All this is filled with, CDs, sorry, DVDs of artist videos. I'm still buying them. I want to learn. I'm hungry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I, wow. I don't believe anyone will arrive on this side of life. This one, mm. this side of life, we all mm. evolve. When we get mm. to heaven, then we arrive. We can then do mm. masterpieces with just one mm. brush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it's been an amazing time. Our time is far spent. Uh, we're going to be timed out now. So I want to say a very big thank you to uh, our guest today. And okay. trust me, uh, once school resumes, you know, I teach...